workers. The diagnosis, a broken collarbone. Hello and welcome to the square in Arras in northern France this morning and the question on everybody's lips is will Rolf Sorensen arrive with his Ariostia team and sign on for this morning's stage? Yesterday he crashed some four kilometres from the finish, he fell over a bike of a fallen rider, he remounted very quickly with a hurt shoulder and he actually finished the stage only 13 seconds behind the day's winner. For more than two and a half hours the organisers thought that first Sean Kelly and then Greg Le Monde was the new leader of the Tour de France and they didn't make a presentation. When the photo finish was finally diagnosed, it was found that, in fact, Rolf Sorensen had arrived on the bike of his teammate Ken Gliata and the frame numbers were, of course, different. Then, after that, Sorensen was taken away to hospital in tears. Last night, Gary Imlach went to his hotel and he found a very sad and frustrated race leader. Rolf Sorensen was still wearing the yellow jersey last night, but it was in tatters, and so were his chances of finishing the tour, despite a brave and painful ride to finish yesterday's stage after his crash. After that was four kilometers from the finish that I crashed, and with one kilometer to go, it, I felt my shoulder was painful, and I took my hand up here, and I felt the bone was sticking out, and... Uh, yeah, well, I managed to go to the finish, and, and that was it. Then, then it was painful a lot. How does the injury feel now, Rolf? It's a little bit better, but it's still very painful. And uh, they made this big bandage, and they tried to push it a little down to, to make it the pain less. Uh, when I was arriving to the hospital, it was... I was crying after pain because I've never felt a pain like that, and maybe the pain, maybe the, maybe the, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, the shock and, uh, and disappointment from losing. <laughs> maybe should stop in the tour, but it's actually happened because it's a, it's broken and it's quite not very easy to set together, so they have to operate me. You're still wearing the yellow jersey, although not in the way we usually see it on the tour. What are you going to do tomorrow? Ah, uh, 99% uh, I can't start. But maybe I go to the start and I'll see how I feel during the night. And if it's not too painful, I'll go to the start and maybe put on the jersey and do a kilometer just to, just to salute the the crowd and the people and and it's the saddest of news for Sorensen's Ariostia team because he has not come to sign on this morning the signing on sheet remaining blank and the news is he's already left for Bergamo for an operation on his collarbone and he's expected to be out of the sport for at least three weeks that means the new leader today is Greg Lamond uh, but Greg Lamond has said he does not wish to wear the yellow jersey as a tribute to Sorensen only if it is by right at the end of the day the overall situation now is that Greg Lamond leads the Tour de France by one second from Sean Kelly and Eric Broeking is in third place. So the Tour rolled away from Arras this morning, technically with no leader of the race and the yellow jersey up for grabs. Can it be Sean Kelly? Because look at the route this morning, there are three sprints on the course and they all carry small time bonuses. There is, of course, time bonuses too for the first three riders to reach the finish. If Sean Kelly can grab just two seconds, he could be the leader of the tour tonight. Well, after the road started well this morning, there was a split in the race early on. It came back together. But when we came up to the first split of the day at Liam Corps, 21 and a half kilometers covered, it was Abdu Jafarov, clearly with his sights on the yellow jersey, who took the six seconds bones ahead of Johan Museu 
and Olaf Ludwig. And at the second sprint, at 158 kilometers covered at Kiberville Gymnaire, Thierry Marie was in the lead, and in the lead by 15 minutes. In second place in the main field was Abdu Jafarov taking four more seconds, and Olaf Ludwig, two seconds. So, at this stage of the race, Abdu Jafarov has claimed 10 seconds in bonus time, and now is about 17 seconds off the race lead. And the one man who might well spoil a perfect day for Abdu Jafarov is Thierry Marie. Here he is. He broke away soon after Abdu Jafarov won that opening sprint after only 21 kilometers this morning. And he's now on his way into Godeville. As you can see, 221 and a half kilometers covered, 259 into the city of Le Havre. And his lead has been up as high as 22 minutes today. But the chase is now on in earnest. Rob Harmelin. Harmeling of the Dutch team is chasing him, approximately 10 minutes behind, and the main field are 12 minutes 40 seconds at the last check. Well, there, Harmeling getting a time check from his team manager there, probably telling him that the uh, race is starting to hotter behind him, and he very, very well may get caught quite soon. However, Thierry Maurice made an incredible effort to stay away there. He's a, very, he's a specialist at this kind of effort, and he may well pull it off towards the end, although there are some very hard hills to climb as we come into Le Havre. Well, there's the honours list this year of uh, Rob Harmeling. He is his third year professional now, uh, but he's never won a race at all. And he's trying now. At one stage, it appeared he was going across the gap very smoothly, but I think he's actually gone into the wall a little bit here. And the main field are being led by the Buckler team. Let's have a look at that now. Here they are. And also the Carrera team, because they are thinking at the moment of Abdu Japarov. If they can get this man to the finish, then they will feel very confident he'll take his third stage win. And if he did, he'd certainly take with it the yellow jersey of the Tour de France, which, as I said at the beginning, is up for grabs because Greg LeMond is riding in the colours of his Z team. It's been a long day for these riders. There have literally been no attacks all day since Thierry Marie broke away. On the mountains, there's been a... Uh, a little bit of chasing done by Peter de Klerk, the King of the Mountains leader. He's been getting placed on the mountains. But Tiddy Marie has led all of the way, and he deserves certainly now to win this stage of the Tour de France. He is a very good rider to give such a lead. He's lying 12th overall in the Tour de France, 1 minute and 28 seconds back. So almost since the first you know, two or three kilometers of his attack this morning, he has literally been the race leader of the Tour. That's right, and if he can stay away by just that little distance at the finish, he could put on the yellow jersey for quite some time until we get to the first mountains anyway, because one thing Thierry Murray can't do is he can't go uphill, but he certainly can time trial, and he's used that advantage today to build up this massive lead that he's got. It's almost been, Paul, today with the big disappointment, and I think the true sorrow felt amongst the pack with the loss of Rolf Sorensen, it almost feels as if they've called a truce. Well, it's very strange. It's a long time since we've had a long, lone breakaway like this in the Tour de France, and I was astounded when they let a lone leader get such a big lead because it really has been a long time. Well, the last time, by the way, that the, there's been no yellow jersey in the peloton of the Tour de France was in 1980, when Bernard Eno, the race leader, arrived in Po with a knee problem. He announced at 10 o'clock at night then to all of the press that he would not start the next day, and Joop Zutemelk refused to pull on at the leader's yellow jersey the following day. But the day after that, it was his by right, and he went on to win the 1980 Tour de France. Now, there's a big split in the peloton here, Paul. I'm wondering if there's been a crash. Well, there is, and I've just heard on the radio that Robert Miller is one of those riders to go down there, and it really has caused chaos again. I tell you, this race this year is very, very dangerous. Well, this has only happened as the camera came back, and there has been a crash here. Paul Sherwin has said he believes Robert Miller is one of the riders, and there is Robert standing up, but happily looks okay, but in no hurry to get back on his bike in the centre of our picture there with the white helmet on. And again, a crash uh, towards the end of the stage of the Tour de France, and this must be the fourth day running. Well, this is uh, a problem that you usually get in the Tour de France when it gets very hot. And I've noticed that in the past, whenever there's been a hot tour, there have been a lot of crashes because the riders don't recuperate very well, they don't sleep very well at night because it's so hot in the rooms, and they get tired and they lose their reflexes a little bit. And that's what's happened the last two or three days. There's been nothing but crashes. So it looks as though Henri Mandis from Helvetia being pushed off there. One or two riders moving off now. Uh, looking around from our helicopter, it does appear 
that all of the riders are up and away and that's what we want to see of course the crowds today have been the biggest of the tour so far and this is an example of that and they've been treated to a grandstand as a view of the big pileup well it looks as though everybody's up and riding at least Tiddy Marie is the leader on the road the question is can he hold on for just another 30 kilometers or so and win the stage to take the lead we'll take a break Well, welcome back and just in time because the main field here, some seven and a half minutes since Tiddy Marie went through this third and final sprint of the day, are now approaching for the second place and a four second time bonus. The crash, by the way, one rider still remains at the scene and that is Marshal Gaon of Toshiba, who apparently is injured, but all of the rest of the riders are on their way, including Robert Miller. But look at this sprint now coming up for second place. And it's Claudio Chiapucci and Sean Kelly fighting it out here. And right on the line, I think Sean Kelly's taken that from Claudio Chiapucci. And if he has, that four-second bonus could be so vital if the race can now bring back Tiddy Marie before the finish. Well, Claudio Chiapucci, by his manner of attacking riding, is one of the most popular riders among the spectators in this year's Tour de France, as Gary Imlac reports. Claudio Chiapucci is pro-cycling showman. The little rider with the big opinion of himself and a relentless attacking style to back it up. His stunts on the road may not always come off, but the press and public love him for it, especially in his native Italy. There are fewer members of the Claudio fan club, though, in the peloton, which has to spend more time and energy than it would like chasing down reckless Chiapucci brakes. I enjoy very much to present a nice show to my fans. Cycling must be a spectacular event to please them. It's also very exciting for me to influence the race by the way I behave on the roads. So I will always try to win if I feel I am physically able to. It was Chiapucci's love of the breakaway that enabled him to get a 10-minute jump on the big names in last year's tour and take the yellow jersey, which he held until the final time trial. As well as making his mum proud, the Mayo Jaune also made Claudio's name outside Italy. In the meantime, he says, his team leader's status at Carrera had already begun to make him a little more cautious. Yes, it's nice and still funny. I enjoy to be known. But as I said, I have more responsibilities than in the past. Now I have to take care of the whole team, which is helping me a lot. I moved into a complete new situation, which I had to learn to deal with. Before, I could attack when I wanted. I could take more risks without being under pressure. Now I have to use my brain in a more efficient way. I still like to be aggressive on the roads, but I can't make big mistakes anymore. As a marked man this year, it's also unlikely he'll be able to make a really big break from the pack. But attacks on stage four on the road to Reims, and again yesterday, show that the world number two is still a wild card to be reckoned with in this year's tour. But right now, we're not looking at Claudio Chiapucci on the attack, but his arch-rival, Bugno, and Greg Lamond is going after him as well. So Gianni Bugno again antagonizing the peloton as he tries to steal a few seconds before the finish of a stage of the Tour de France. Thierry Marie is still holding on to around five minutes of his lead at the moment. But these speeds, the speed now in the main field, it must be coming down very quickly. Well, it must be, and Greg Lamont being very attentive today, he noticed that the man to watch was Sir Gianni Bugno. Yesterday we had the attack by Claudio Chiapucci. It looks to me as if the leaders of the Tour de France don't want to wait until they get to the mountains before they attack, and the attacks are coming every day now from one rival or the other. Back to the leader, and he is now, and he deserves to look tired too, is his Tiddy Marie. Marie is now on the outskirts of La Havre, but still about four and a half kilometers to go and his legs surely now paul are the, well, they must be like rubber well they really are hurting now you can see how he was using the top part of his body there but this is an incredible group that's formed behind that's to baldy on the front there trying to put the pressure on and we've got an incredible group as i say abdi zaparov is in there greg lamond gianni bugno johan brunil from the lotto squad phil anderson jean-claude colotti Etienne de Wilder is there, the, the rider who won just a few days ago. Maurizio Fondries, Charlie Motte. So what a group we've got here. Well, this group is now a 15-second break over the main field. And a few seconds, and the rider you didn't mention there, Paul, I don't think, was Eric Broeking. So he must have missed it. 
I didn't get Eric Brookings name at all over the radio there so he may well have missed that. It's just 15 seconds gap. This is Lamont on the front now putting the pressure on followed very closely by Sean Kelly. Well Sean Kelly is absolutely superb in this year's Tour de France. You know he's 35 years of age. He started this season with a broken collarbone. Now it's worth taking note here that in 1983 when Sean Kelly wore the leader's yellow jersey in Poe in the Tour de France he also started the season with a broken collarbone. Now, will it be yellow for Kelly tonight, or will indeed Tiddy Marie hang on? And I have to say I have split loyalties now because Marie has worked so hard today to become the race leader. We're now out uh, briefly along the coastline here before we go into the centre of La Havre. And how on earth is this man finding 74 kilometres an hour? He's just being drawn to the finish as if by a magnet. And this has been an outstanding adventure in the Tour de France today. Breaking away after 25 kilometres. And I'm sure now, Paul, he won't be caught. Well, I'm fairly sure he's not going to be caught either. And what a strong man. Three kilometres to go. That's about four minutes of pain that he's got to go through. And that's the distance. Only just a little bit lower than the distance of the prologue that he won a few days ago. But this man really is a specialist of the solitary effort. Inside two kilometres now, right into the centre of Le Havre. Tiddy Marie racing now for the yellow jersey as well as, the, as well as the stage win, which is now surely his. And when he broke away after 25 kilometres, I think everybody in the peloton must have looked at each other and said he must be mad. And he stayed away for 230 uh, 234 kilometres today in very, very hot and humid conditions again, although when we came through Dieppe, it was rather chilly as there's a mist blowing in there off the sea. The peloton regrouping for the sprint now, and this might help Marie because for a moment they might hesitate a little bit. The sprinters sensing that they're not going to catch him. Sean Kelly, had they brought this lead down to inside, 58 seconds would certainly have taken the yellow jersey tonight and because Abdu Japarov, his nearest rival, needed to win the stage. That is not possible now, but if the gap is more than 58 seconds at the finish, then the yellow jersey will be the Frenchman tonight. And that for France, I think, Paul, is one that they would never have expected. Well, I don't think anybody would have expected this. Thierry Marie can't be more than a minute and a half away from us now as the main field turns onto the Esplanade there. They're, they're boring down on him, but it's going to be there. the last kilometre for Thierry Murray. One minute and ten seconds roughly to go for him. And he looks as if he's definitely going to take the stage victory, but we'll have to start the clock and see if he can hold on and take that yellow jersey. What a welcome sight. The kite in the road there must have been. As Thierry Murray now races with honour through the streets of Le Havre, winner of the prologue time trial and as he does in all the days that follow the prologue time trials the stage one he loses the yellow jersey as he's done in berlin uh, rather in paris when he won and again when he won in futuroscope and again when he won in leon here this year he lost the yellow jersey next day and he never took it back in the two previous tours but he's going to take it back this time i think Six hours, 37 minutes, and I think he's been the lead for the best part of the six hours today as he comes up towards the line now. Tilly Marie racing to yellow. The vacant slot in the Tour de France is going to be filled by a Frenchman, I think. We'll have to wait for the final countdown, but I don't think now the big fields have closed down enough time to deprive him of, his, of this most marvellous day in the Tour de France for France and for Tilly Marie. And if you know Tilly Marie, he's a superb guy. Everybody likes him. He's so polite. And now they will salute the winner of the tour today after a marvellous breakaway. 235 kilometres in the lead. And now the clock is counting as we gaze out across the basin here in La Havre. If 58 it goes by, Tiddy Marie will be the leader of the tour. And look at the average speed in the top corner of our screen. 39 kilometers an hour, that's virtually 25 miles an hour. And he's done it all, of himself, all by himself. Now let's wait and see when the peloton arrives. Well, as we look at the main field coming in now to the Arbre, it's ticking off and the crowd are already cheering. They spotted the kilometre kite in the sky. They know now the race lead is in France. 
58 seconds has passed by and the main field are approximately 800 metres from the line. 800 metres has robbed Sean Kelly today of the yellow jersey in the Tour de France for only the second time in his career and only three Irish riders have ever worn it anyway. Kelly, of course, being one, Stephen Roach and Seamus Elliott. Now the spin for the second place as the battle of the sprinters now now will kelly try and take second place here the little green jersey of abdul jafarov tucked away to the left he's been pushed out of it a little bit here now as the spin opens up and it's really dormant in the center of feet. look at abdul jafarov go on the right of the picture though he's so fast his rider and now he's clear again Remy stump is on his wheel johan Zeo in the center the knock to get near abdul jafarov well, he's going to get near him as they come on the line now, Remy Stump, I think, was got it on the line. Kelly was alongside Stump, so too was Jafferoff, Andrew Jafferoff. They were the three over the line. There's only a question of what order they came over the line in. I think it was Stump, Andrew Jafferoff and Kelly, but we'll have to wait and find out. And just look at that on the line. It's clear to me now, Remy Stump has beaten Andrew Jafferoff. Sean Kelly was fourth. Well, the result first, a great win for Thierry Marie of France. He had 22 minutes at one stage. He won by just enough to give him victory and the yellow jersey today. In second place, the battle of the sprinters again. And now we're finding a new name in the sprints, Remy Stump. He beats Jamodeline Abdu Japarov and Ireland's Sean Kelly. Yellow jersey going on the shoulders of Thierry Marie. And surely this was not in his mind when he broke away after 25 kilometres today. A breakaway of 235 kilometres for yellow. Well, a great day for him and a great day for France. This is the overall situation now. Thierry Marie heads the race from Sean Kelly and Abdou Japarov. But the gap is opening in favour of Thierry Marie, especially with the time trial to come. Well, again today, we saw an accident in the closing kilometres of the race. And one of the fallers was Robert Miller. He got up and he came into the finish almost six minutes behind. Paul Sherwin was there to ask him exactly what happened. Robert, we saw you go down there. Just exactly what happened? I don't know. Uh, the wheel in front of me stopped and I rode straight into it. I was, like, first on the ground. So, like, uh, then everybody fell on top of me. There's a lot of crashes in this Tour de France. Do you feel it's because some of the riders are tired because of the heat? No, it's because it's so important to stay near the front that everybody fights together. And uh, as soon as 